Thanks. Thank you. You arrive at the airport. You check in. You make your way through security. Maybe you stop off and grab a sandwich. Use the restroom. You finally arrive at your gate. While you were doing this, you were probably checking email on your phone. Maybe you're talking with、uh, some friends via text. Maybe you're thinking about work. At best, you were probably half paying attention as you wandered around this ridiculously large and complex place. Yet, if you got from point A to B to C without getting lost, it's not an accident. It's because of a man named Jim Harding or one of his colleagues. Jim Harding works in an unusual field called wayfinding. These are the people who design the signs and systems to help us navigate or find our way through complex environments like airports, hospitals, even cities. They figure out which typefaces to use, which ones are the most legible from a distance, what illustrations can be understood by the greatest number of people. They even angle aisles in certain ways. All these different things to usher us from one place to the next. Often without us even realizing it, and that's the thing I want to focus on about Jim Harding's work: that when it's at its best, it goes by unnoticed. He simply wants you to get from one place to the next without even thinking about it. And this is really the opposite of how so many of us operate. For most of us, the better we do our work, the more recognition we receive. Yet for Jim Harding, perfection equals invisibility. He told me. That for him, for his work to go unnoticed, it's a mark of honor and a source of deep satisfaction. <laughs> How strange that is, because we live in a culture today where attention seems to be valued above everything else. You know, where reality TV shows come and go, but they've never canceled one because there weren't enough contestants. And we all sort of seek our own little micro celebrity, don't we? Where we're all spending so much time online, kind of secretly hoping for more and more likes on every post, hoping for ever more followers. We're told that to get ahead in business, you need to raise your profile or build a platform. The message seems to be that we're told that the more attention we receive for ourselves and for our work, the better off we're going to be. But what if this is a vast myth? What if, in order to become really successful and to be really fulfilled and satisfied, what if that can happen without gaining any attention at all? I traveled around the states, to Europe, and Asia, to meet with people like Jim Harding, invisibles, people who are really skilled at what they do, whose work is critical to whatever endeavor they're a part of, but yet who go largely unnoticed by the public. I wanted to know, in a culture where recognition is valued so highly, what kind of person chooses to work behind the scenes and thrives there? And I found, despite a really wide range of fields and industries that all of these people work in, that they share certain traits. The most important of which is that they have a real ambivalence toward recognition. They simply don't seek attention the way it seems so many of us do. And yet, amazingly, this attitude. By not seeking attention is actually what brought them their success. Another invisible is a man named Dennis Poon. He is a structural engineer on many of the world's tallest skyscrapers. He is on the board of directors of a global engineering firm. These buildings cost billions of dollars to create. The safety and soundness of these buildings rests on his calculations. Now, the Frank Lloyd Wrights and the Frank Gehrys of the world are going to get all the recognition, but without Dennis Poon and his colleagues, their buildings wouldn't stand.、And、Dennis Poon, in his role with all that enormous responsibility, the vast teams of workers underneath his charge, he is a leader. And yet, Dennis Poon, whenever I asked him a question about himself, invariably answered "we" instead of "I." And I found this collaborative mindset that he had common among all the invisibles that I met with. And again, this attitude brought this guy to the very top of his field by not trying to be this big person out front, but by seeing himself as something as part of something larger. I first met Peter Stumpf when he was buried under the lid of a Steinway concert grand piano, like a mechanic under the hood of a Rolls Royce. Peter Stumpf is a renowned piano technician. 
and he works for a renowned symphony orchestra. Except he's not like the guy who comes to your house and just tunes your piano at home. Peter Stumpf spends days and days working meticulously behind the scenes, changing not just the tuning on the pianos, but adjusting the weight and the height of the keys, how the felt hits the strings, all these little meticulous details that he works on. That oftentimes the musicians, the conductor, and the crowd don't even know. All they know is everything sounds great. And for Peter Stumpf, that's all that matters. He told me, "My name is never in the brochure, and I'm fine with that because when I'm sitting in the audience, and I hear Emmanuel Ax, a famous pianist, performing, I feel as though I'm having a duet." Peter Stumpf's behind-the-scenes meticulousness. Again, another core trait of these invisibles. He doesn't care if anyone knows about all the details he did. He just wants a great end result. We're told that we need to promote ourselves, and we do sometimes and in different circumstances. But what the invisibles show us is that by embodying certain traits, and that by valuing yourself as part of something larger, that they are both the antithesis and the antidote to our age of relentless self-promotion. Thank you. Ha <laughs> ha. Thank you. You arrive at the airport. You check in. You make your way through security. Maybe you stop off and grab a sandwich. Use the restroom. You finally arrive at your gate. While you were doing this, you were probably. Checking email on your phone. Maybe you're talking with、uh, some friends via text. Maybe you're thinking about work. At best, you were probably half paying attention as you wandered around this ridiculously large and complex place. Yet, if you got from point A to B to C without getting lost, it's not an accident. It's because of a man named Jim Harding or one of his colleagues. Jim Harding works in an unusual field called wayfinding. These are the people who design the signs and systems to help us navigate or find our way through complex environments like airports, hospitals, even cities. They figure out which typefaces to use, which ones are the most legible from a distance, what illustrations can be understood by the greatest number of people. They even Angle aisles in certain ways. All these different things to usher us from one place to the next, often without us even realizing it. And that's the thing I want to focus on about Jim Harding's work: that when it's at its best, it goes by unnoticed. He simply wants you to get from one place to the next without even thinking about it. And this is really the opposite of how so many of us operate. For most of us, the better we do our work, the more recognition we receive. Yet for Jim Harding, perfection equals invisibility. He told me that for him, for his work to go unnoticed, it's a mark of honor and a source of deep satisfaction. <laughs> and how strange that is, because we live in a culture today where attention seems to be valued above everything else. You know, where reality TV shows come and go. But they've never canceled one because there weren't enough contestants, and we all sort of seek our own little micro celebrity, don't we? Where we're all spending so much time online, kind of secretly hoping for more and more likes on every post. 